Hey everyone, this is Christine from Left Side Art. Today I am going to use Pam Pastels in color pencils to draw an owl. This owl I found on Pixabay and these are royalty free images that you can use in your artwork and not have to worry about any copyrighted uh, materials. What I'm using here is a Derwent Color Soft um, pencil in cream to outline some of my sketch. I opted for this pencil instead of using um, graphite or charcoal because this is a relatively soft pencil and I am using CNN paper uh, by Sedan Lair. I'll have links to the pad of paper and the pan pastels and such in the description below. But the CNN paper is very coarse. Um, it has like these little fibers on top of the paper. It's not like watercolor paper at all. It's um, it's almost like drawing on top of sandpaper. And you have to be somewhat careful. It doesn't erase very easily, but you can layer um, very nicely, one layer after another on this paper. So what I'm going in here with is um, a soft tip applicator. This is a newer one for pan pastels that you may not have seen yet. The tip kind of looks like an um, eyeshadow applicator and it actually could come out of the handle and so you can use the same handle for you know multiple colors um, and the little pad that I am mixing colors on is a sponge applicator. You could use a sponge applicator to apply product straight to your paper as well but it makes a nice blending surface. For the eyes I am using um, a yellow shade it's diarylide, sorry if I mispronounced that, um, and a permanent red. That yellow, if you want to know the actual shade, is 250.3, and the permanent red is 340.5. In any case, just to get a yellow and a red that, you know, or if you can find an orange that you like, I like to mix the two colors together and get a lot of variation in. Um, the eyes. This blue I'm using is just a Payne's Gray and this um, applicator I'm using is basically a shorter version of the other one I was just using um, and this really does look like an eyeshadow applicator. Again you can get um, replacements for these. They come in you know packs of 10 or 20 something like that um, but they're really soft little tips and since you can use so many of them you don't have to worry about mixing color but you could also just wipe these off on a piece of tissue like a paper towel or a, a regular towel really easily and get the color off so if you want to reuse it for multiple colors you can it just makes it convenient that so many come to a pack you can change it change them out and have you know one per color as much as you want these pan pastels are nice because you can either screw them together and um, they kind of stack on top of each other like a tower or you can lay them in these trays. This is the smaller tray. There's a larger one as well. The smaller one fits 10, the larger fits 20. And now I'm going over top of some of the pastel with the Derwent Drawing 24 soft drawing pencils. I wasn't too impressed with the way these pencils were um, laying down on top of the sanded paper, but I wanted to give it a try. Otherwise, these um, set of 24 drawing pencils work really nice on watercolor paper. Um, they are super pigmented, super blendable with a little bit of um, paint thinner, and you can really lay down color pretty quickly. On the sanded paper, I think the tips were just too soft and it was kind of chewing out my pencils and I wasn't able to get a lot of fine detail that I was looking for, especially in the eyes. This is another type of applicator that is, I think, a lot more common with PM Pastels. Uh, the little tip is kind of a sleeve that you put on this blue plastic handle and you can change the tips out, but I find that a little difficult because they can rip if you're taking them on and off. Um, so I just have several of them that I use either for light or dark colors. And what's nice is that you can kind of paint the pan pastel pigment onto your onto your uh, drawing here. 
And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to find where my dark sunlights go, laying down a relatively similar color to what I want on the finished product. Um, and the color of this paper is the darkest black. It looks a little bit lighter here, but it's actually pretty dark. And I was trying to use that um, to help, you know, with some of these darker areas in the owl. And I think it definitely um, played into how the end result looks. But I, if I were to do this again, I would have left some more of that paper showing through certain areas of the owl. That's still one thing I struggle with using toned paper is I still have a tendency to try to cover it all up like I would if I was using uh, straight white paper. And I'm just going in and putting kind of like where the feathers would go. They're a little more blocky on his forehead here and more wisped out along uh, his cheek areas. So I'm just going along with the grain of where his feathers normally would be. Rather than um, color block this in, it's, it helps define some of the texture through his feathers, just going along with that grain. And I am referring back to my um, photo from Pixabay as I'm going along. I'm just continuing to add some of the lights and darks around his face and some of these feathers wisp along um, in front of the beak. So I'm also trying to lay that in here. And honestly, this is looking a little messy at this point, but that's okay. I'll go back over all this pan pastel with pencil to refine some of the areas that need more definition. You can definitely take um, a, a finer applicator with these pan pastels and get some more detail if you don't want to go over it with color pencil. There are some pan pastel artists that will use the slightest amount of pan pastel for the background and then go over it in color pencil. I tend to use more pan pastel and less color pencil. Now some of these colors I'm using, um, like that light brown there is raw umber. The white is a raw umber tint, even though it looks rather white, it's actually raw umber tint. And I was playing around with some of the blues here and there for the shadows um, because it was already so such a dark paper, I had to kind of incorporate a shadow somehow. So I was using some various blues like phthalo blue, extra dark, and more of the Payne's gray, but in an extra dark shade as well. The teal color you see down there at the bottom is a turquoise extra dark. And I use various sets of grays, neutral, gray, extra dark. And let me see what else. I have uh, just a regular neutral gray. And that reddish brown over to the right is red iron, excuse me, red iron oxide extra dark. The extra darks are really nice. It was actually a set of pan pastels I had gotten, um, I believe on Amazon. And the extra darks are just nice because they're already the darker version of the pan pastel you might be uh, already used to using. So that was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do this owl in this color scheme is because I just got you know some more pan pastels and wanted to try them out. And I'm just continuing to go through um, and I just wanted to keep a soft ending to his body down at the bottom. I didn't really want to just have him cut off completely. So I just kind of keep feathering out his feathers um, and adding in some darks and lights and mid-tones as I go along. His eyes are definitely the focus of this painting and the eyes in the beak area and in, in between where his uh, the bridge of his nose is, is definitely uh, where I spent most of my time and just kept refining. Uh, the colors and the layers in here. The more layers you add, the more depth you'll be able to see throughout your painting. And that's true with any media. You can um, you know, you do, use that approach with acrylic paints, color pencils directly on paper, pan pastels, um, even charcoal and, and graphite. Now I've gone back and switched to my smaller applicator for some of the finer details around his beak. And 
and around the eyes. And this is where I would go back and forth between um, using some of the darker blues. I even pulled out a black at one time just to try to add in um, a little bit darker color as an undertone, not you know to leave it there, but just trying to darken back up some of the areas I might have lightened up too much. And you can see what I mean now, like as I'm getting further along in my drawing, I definitely should probably have left some more of that tone paper showing through. But in any case, it at least saved me time from coloring in a really dark background. Now I'm going through with some of Karen Dosh um, pencils. These are a creamier pencil and also somewhat soft. And I was just trying to go through and play with uh, some of the details in the owl's eyes and beak. I've seen other um, pan pastel artists on YouTube like Bokeh. If you've heard of her, I'll have a link to her YouTube below. She does some amazing work with pan pastels and Karen Dosh pencils and such. I think because I added so much pan pastel on here first and then tried going with pencil, I actually switched to my polychromos, which is a much harder lead. And this actually worked out a lot better for me when I wanted to get some of the fine detail and splitting some of these feathers um, up a bit and especially around the eyes and the beak. And that about wraps this piece up. I do store this in an archival box laying flat with a piece of uh, glycine on top of it in between each of my drawings. I do not spray this with fixative just because of the horrors I see other people going through with fixatives ruining their paintings. And if I were to display this, I would display this behind glass with a floating mat so the glass was not touching the piece. I hope you've enjoyed this and be sure to look for my future videos where I use pan pastels, ink tents, color pencils, I do a lot of mixed media and art journaling. I do a little bit of everything that makes me happy. So be sure to check out more of my channel and I will catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.